welcome back to the channel. The US Open build-up is underway. The Grand Slam is set to start very, very soon. And today, we are joined here by none other than one of uh, India's former tennis stars. We're joined by Somdev Devarman. Somdev, thank you so much for joining us today for this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure. So let's just uh, quickly get down to the question side of things. Uh, first, obviously, you know, going into the uh, Grand Slam this time around, there's a little bit of a, I don't know, anticlimactic feel to the build. Because I don't think, in, at least for the men's single side, no one's really looking beyond, say, uh, Rafa Nadal. Obviously, his injuries have been a bit of a worry. But do you see anyone actually being able to stop him, considering even with injuries, he seems to have a fighting spirit that just seem, seemingly rages on? I mean... Rafa is one of the favorites. It's undoubted. Don't. Uh, there's no question about that. However, the fact that he's really not played a whole lot of tennis on the hard courts, mm. um, especially after his uh, semi-final withdrawal at Wimbledon, he's not played any matches. So you know, the the the, the there's there's good things and there's tough things for Rafa ahead. Uh, you know, the good thing is is that uh, you know I think he's got a very favorable first round match. Second round he gets past either Fognini or Karatsev, both of who have the ability to beat him. Uh, then you know, once he gets past that, uh, you know, I think he'll be uh, he'll be in much better shape. He'll feel you know he'll be feeling like uh, like what he wants to feel coming to a Grand Slam, which is you know being able to win these uh, tough matches. Uh, but it's not going to be easy, and 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 the reason for that is, uh, in my opinion, certainly lack of matches. Yeah, so obviously lack of match practice in his case, but there's another, you know, veteran star who's been getting match practice uh, in the women's division. Of course, I'm referring to Serena Williams. This is going to be her, uh, her farewell run of sorts. She said very clearly that she's going to be retiring after this, but she's bowing out in front of, you know, a very uh, in front of what should be a very partisan crowd, home crowd. Do you think, obviously, you know, her, her concerns, injury concerns, we know for a fact there have been a lot of them. She's just about been getting back into match practice is there a chance of a fairy tale run? Do you think she can summon that one last fight and actually, you know, equal that record she's been chasing, Margaret Coates' record? Um, I mean, if anyone can do it, Serena can. Hmm. But it's not going to be easy. It's certainly. I mean, here's a here's a, a stat about Serena for this year that most people don't know. She's only played four matches. She's only played four matches, and she's only won one. And the last one, she got you know, she got a, a beating almost from Emma Raducanu six four six five in the in the last uh, tournament. So. Uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really, really hard. Uh, can she do it? Yes. Does she have the quality? No doubt. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just a lot to go out there and play seven matches when you're not, you know, your body is not used to that. I know mentally she's obviously has more experience than anyone, uh, but to be able to draw at a draw on that experience now will be the key. Uh, you know, second round if she wins her first uh, up against Contovet, the second seed. So, you know, the good news is if she wins that, um, she'll take the spot of the second seed, which is really, which is really uplifting news for any, anybody who's a Serena Williams fan. But the tough news is it's, it's Contovet and then it's probably Trevisan. So she's going to have to really grind her way, um, you know, really dig deep, really fight hard, all things that we've seen her do. Uh, and she's going to need a little bit of luck because, you know, this is her last tournament. Hopefully she gets a little bit of divine intervention uh, but regardless of what happens, regardless what happens, I think the important thing is to celebrate, you know, the great career that uh, Serena has had, the, 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 the way she's been an inspiration to so many. Um, and, 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 you know, just, just celebrate the fact that she's one of the greatest tennis players ever. Now, obviously, we were talking about, you mentioned Radhikanu and the fact that she recently actually given quite a hiding to Williams. I think it's, it's an interesting Grand Slam in many ways for Radhikanu as well. Remember, last year, she won it unfancied, non serious she ended up winning it without actually dropping a set, which was in itself massive. And remember, I think she had qualified for the tournament as well. However, one year since, I think a lot has changed for her. And, you know, obviously from those highs, there have been a bit of lows as well. Do you think it's an important tournament for her considering, you know, there have been doubts raised over her. And of course, we know the British media can be a little uh, fickle in that regard. But there have been questions raised over whether or not she's ready for that big time yet, despite her shock Grand Slam win. Do you think this is an important time for her to go out there and prove those doubters wrong? I mean, quality is undoubted when it comes to Radukanu. Uh, the consistency, however, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's where it's, uh, it's really been hard for her to kind of match that level. Uh, yes, when she did come out last year, uh, she was ranked about 150 in the world. And, and, and won 10 matches in a row from the qualifying, like you said, without uh, losing a set. So, uh, you know, and she loves being in the big stage. You know, I was just reading uh, an article earlier today 
uh, that said that uh, Emma Raducanu is one of the top 10 earners either in the WTA or the ATP. So, uh, you know, the fact she, she's, she's become a mega superstar of the game and it's all happened incredibly fast. Now, the question is, how is she going to deal with all of this? How is she going to deal with, you know, the, the fame on social media, the fame, uh, you know, of her being um, an unbelievable tennis player, of course, and how to back it up. From everything that I've read, seen, um, you know, she seems that she's got a really good head on her shoulders. Uh, however, the results uh, say that she's not quite, um, you know, at that top 10 mark, despite her ranking being there. And, and again, just looking at results, um, the number of losses she's taken, you know, she's not really won any tournament since uh, since the US Open. So uh, she's still looking to find her form, uh, I would say. Uh, quality, undoubted. Um, ability, consistently, I think uh, that's where she has to improve. And obviously, uh, you know, we're talking about that consistency part is definitely one thing she needs to work on. Well, of course, another thing which uh, has been a bit of a talking point going into the US Open, and it's not so much a tennis thing as much as it was Novak Djokovic's participation. Now, there were obviously, remember, Australian Open, there was a big uh, hue and cry about whether or not he would participate. There's, that became a big story. Here, however, he confirmed two days back that he won't be able to participate, despite the fact that it was pretty evident. Do you think it's a bit of a distraction for, you know, even tennis organizers or even the players have to be dealing with this happening constantly because it's just it just doesn't go away. Uh, I mean, he's made a decision and he's stuck to it. You know, this is what he believes in. Uh, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. He was allowed to uh, uh, come into the States the last two years. Yeah. You know, uh, and, 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 and that's the unfortunate bit. Um, so, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> I think to understand is that uh, these decisions are at the end of the day so what everybody knew. Uh, it's sad for a tournament because you always want to have the best players in the world playing at the biggest events and, you know, Medved it's going to be Medvedev at number one. Unfortunately, no Sasha, uh, but there's, uh, you know, going to be Rafa and unfortunately no Novak. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, one really has to wonder, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say right now because if you think about it, this year, He's played four slams. I mean, the, out of the four slams, he's not been able to play in Australia. Mm. Uh, he's not able to play at, at the Open. And these are two hard court slams, which is, I mean, he's a favorite. He won Wimbledon, but he didn't get points for it. Mm. And French, he went down to Rafa. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's, 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 been a, it's been an incredibly strange year for Novak because he's not been able to play even half the schedule that he wants. And despite all of that, uh, well in the top 10, despite all of that, um, you know, going to make the World Tour Finals at the end of the year and probably finish, you know, somewhere close to five or so. Yeah. So, the, the, the standard that he's playing in is, is very clear. Uh, but unfortunately, the repercussions of his decisions, uh, he has to live with it because yeah. you know, he's taken that stand and uh, he knew it. Uh, he waited till the last minute. He was hoping for another exemption. Uh, didn't get it, unsurprisingly. I don't think uh, anybody expected that. Um, and so it's just something that uh, everybody's going to have to live with because, you know, once he's taken that call that, he's, that he wants to remain unvaccinated, then unfortunately for him, he's going to have to deal with the consequences of it. And last question, if uh, you had to pick, like, you know, you did mention that there's some people you're looking forward to seeing. If you had to pick one surprise package from both the men's and the women's side, who you think could probably upset the apple cart, who would those be? Yeah, I mean, in the women's, it's really hard to pick, honestly, mm -hmm. because... There's, I feel like every single tournament, there's, uh, uh, you know, 12, 15, 20 girls that could that could really make a deep run. You saw it at every... I mean, last year, nobody would have expected Radu Kanu and Leila Fernandez to be in the finals uh, at, at the US Open. You know, nobody would have expected Martina Trevisan to make the finals uh, at, at Roland Garros or Ribokina to go out and win Wimbledon like she did. So, the women's always been hard. Um, but just, uh, I, I mean... I would say Caroline Garcia has been playing incredible tennis. Uh, she's won, what, three tournaments in the last yeah. three months in surfaces. Um, you know, so uh, beating Iga Swantek as well. Uh, you know, so I, I, I would say that Caroline Garcia is probably uh, one of the players that, uh, um, you know, could be a dark horse in, in the women's side for sure. Um, in, in the men's side, again, it's hard. I, I mean, you look at the best Americans, you see out there. Uh, and he's won a Masters series beating Rafa in the final this year. So, uh, potentially him. Um, but, I mean, 
again, Sitsi Pass, in my opinion, too, at some point, you know, Felix made a great run here, uh, you know, all the way to the semis. So, uh, you know, he showed that he's the, you know, then there's always Andy Murray, who's interesting to watch. Regardless. You know, is he a favorite? Absolutely not. Um, but, you know, is it, is it, you know, it won't be a surprise in a sense if Alcaraz goes through and wins. Um, yeah. Form that he's been on here, uh, you know, all year round. However, I do think that, um, you know, being in the bottom half, uh, he's got a good opportunity. Uh, Rafa only in the semis. Uh, I mean, coming in and I mean, clearly one of the best players in the world uh, this year. Um, and, and I think that Carlos Alcaraz, in my opinion, is, is probably ready. So the surprise packages would be either Alcaraz or Sinem. Uh, Sinem has been playing red hot tennis as well. Uh, mm-hmm. He can play incredible tennis on the hard courts, on any surface, really, but on hard, he, he can be unplayable sometimes with how hard he hits the ball. Uh, so it's probably one of the young guns in, in the men that can uh, make a deep run. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for this interaction. So it was wonderful talking to you and to all of our subscribers. Don't forget that if you want, if you live in the Indian subcontinent and you want to watch the US Open, the action, you can see all of it live on the Sony Sports Network. And of course, join us here on Sports Today and Sports Talk for all the latest updates from the matches as and when it happens. So I'm going to thank once again for joining us. Thank you, Shane. Thanks.